Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you. I thank you, my Father, for this day. I thank you, my Father, for what you have done in this time of this Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And as we have come to the end of this feasting time with you, my Father, and what you are doing in this time, as we are in the time of counting of the Omar and that which you are doing in this time. And I just want to thank you, Father. I thank you for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon your children in this time, in this time of where we look to you and where, yes, where the world is going deeper and deeper into darkness. And the one thing that I understand, nothing is as it seems. Whatever we see in the surface, nothing is as it seems. But the only thing that is real and that will continue to be real is you, Abba Yahuwah, and your leading by your Ruach HaKodesh, the only one who is able to lead us into all truth. And I thank you, Father, that I don't know how anyone in the time that we are living in can do it without you. I do not know. Because truly, the days are just getting darker and darker. And when I hear what is going on amongst your people, then I am devastated to understand that there is truly a great falling away taking place. Where people are more and more allowing themselves to take offense, offense against their brothers, offense against each other and falling away from your truths. Because they harden their hearts because of offense and where their hearts will wax cold in the end. But Abba Father, I just thank you because in the midst of the storm that we find ourselves in, we know that you are the one that holds us in the palm of your hand and you speak to us in the most amazing ways and I thank you Abba for the way you showed me how you set a table before us in the presence of our enemies and so the enemy is not happy and the enemy is doing everything in his power to be able to bring more and more destruction and more and more division amongst your people but Abba I thank you because for those that are holding on to the hem of your garment with their whole lives, because this is what they can do, is just hold on to the hem of your garment, you are the one that takes them out of the muddy clay, puts their feet solid on the rock of your Shua HaMessiah, the one who will lead us, the one who will guide us, and what a beautiful testimony it is for us to be reading about Joseph, to know that our enemies can kick us when we're down, that our enemies can speak up against us, but at the appointed time, you have everything under control. And at the appointed time, you are the one that is going to be able to Bring to pass that which you have spoken. Your word shall surely come to pass, even if it takes time. Why? Because you are raising up your people. And so many of us have got prophetic word, things that you've spoken to us over our lives that looks like it's impossible, that it's not going to come to pass. And how are these things going to manifest? But at the appointed time, just like it was with Joseph, it shall surely come to pass. Because if you have spoken it, it shall be as you have said, even when we do not understand. But... The process from the time the word is spoken to the time that it's manifest, that is where many people fall by the wayside and never fulfill their given call because the road is difficult. 
It's a hard pressed, narrow path that we must walk to fulfill the destiny that you have before us. And many expect the word to just come to pass. But what they do not understand is they need to be shaped and molded into the character of who you've created them to be in order to fulfill that prophetic word. And this is the process that many people fail. And that is why many don't land up fulfilling their call because of the process that's put before them. And many throw in the towel and never get to fulfill the promise that you have put for them and for their lives. So Abba Yahuwah, I praise you and I thank you for putting this testimony of Joseph in the word for us to know that you are faithful and for us to understand the process that we need to go through, that it was no different for Noah, was no different for Abraham, was no different for Isaac, was no different for Jacob, and is going to be no different for Joseph. Because for each one of them, there was trials and tests that they needed to overcome in order for them to see the fulfillment of the prophetic word that you gave. But we are those that receive prophetic word but we do not want any process. We just want it to automatically come to pass. And yet, you have given us the patriarchs in our Bible to show us that this is a living word and you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You change not. And if you have done it in their lives, you will do it in ours. And so I thank you, Abba Yahuwah for your word and for your many teachings that you are giving us in this hour to prepare us for the days ahead and to prepare us to walk out our call and that which you have ordained for our lives for these end times that we are being raised up for. And so I praise and I thank you for this word, Father, in Yahushua's name. Amen. Amen. And so we're just going to quickly recap. Last week we saw that Abba will put strategic people in places and orchestrate things for that which is necessary for the plan to go ahead. And we saw again that Joseph has Abba's favor on his life and Abba will use, use him as he needs for the work ahead of him. And so we must understand, Joseph had a dream. He didn't have one dream, he had two dreams. Two dreams that were showing the same call. Both of them was the same thing. One was the sun, moon and stars that were bowing to him and the other one were the sheaves bowing to him. Same dreams, same so, so, different dreams, but same meaning. And so he goes and he speaks to the cupbearer and the baker, interprets their dreams. And now, you know, last week I really meditated when I got off and I meditated on the fact that I don't think it was easy for Joseph. Now, I want you to understand something as the father revealed something to me that was quite, quite, quite important. You know, he gave the the the, the cupbearer a good word. He gave the, the 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 cupbearer a word that was encouraging word. Well, you are going to be reinstated into your position within three days, and you are going to be able to serve the pharaoh. But what did he do with the baker though? The word for the baker was not a good word. And last week we looked at the the understanding between the two. That the baker was representing Yeshua's part of him having to go through the suffering that he was going to go through. He was going to have to be put to death. And the baker, because that was the bread that was going to have to die for us, the bread that became flesh that dwelt among us, eventually had to die. And after three days would resurrect. He had to die and then had to resurrect. And then we had a look at the fact that the other... Um, 
the, 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 the cupbearer was bringing the wine. So interesting how the one is bringing the wine representing the blood. The other one is bringing the bread representing the bread that Yeshua is the bread. And after three days, the blood that has been spilt is the blood that has come to set us free. When the blood came out from his side, remember, the blood that runs down to cleanse our eyes, to cleanse our ears, to cleanse our mouth, to cleanse our nose, all of our discernment that we have in our head was the thorn, the crown of thorns. So that's why the helmet of salvation deals with all of that, deals with the eyes, deals with the ears, deals with the nose, deals with the mouth. The helmet of salvation is to be able to take charge of our senses, that we cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself above the, 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 the word of Yahuwah, and that's the crown of, crown of thorns dealing with all of that. Then it was the, the nail-pierced hands, the nail-pierced hands, the work of our hands, the work that we have to do, sanctified by the blood, our works have been set apart to the Father by the blood of Yeshua, the walk. Then the nail pierced uh, feet and then the spear into the innermost parts that brought out blood and water onto the ground to cleanse with the water, to cleanse with the blood. And that is the cupbearer that at the end of the day represents that part of Yeshua that is going to live after the death. He will live and he will be the one that has come to set the captives free. But at the same time, I want you to understand how difficult was it for Joseph to be able to give a bad prophetic word to the cup to the, the baker. How difficult must that have been? To the one is giving a good word, but to the other one is giving a word to say, well, in three days' time, you are going to die, and the birds are going to come and pick at your head, and this is what's going to happen to you. Now, that wouldn't make him very popular, would it? Yet he was bold enough then to still say, remember me when you get released. But I want you to see something here today. So you see, in the prophetic, you don't only just bring the good word, the encouraging word, the blessed word, where the Father will have that side. Remember, he's merciful, he's loving but he's righteous and he's just on the other side. So as a prophetic person, you cannot always just bring the blessing side. You have to have another side of the judgment side because that is the two pillars that stand. You can't just have the one without the other. And so Joseph is showing us that even though it was not a good vision, a good dream, the interpretation wasn't going to be good. But you see, what the father then showed me is this was his test. You see, this was the test to prepare him for the bigger work that was going to come. If he did not pass this test, how was he then going to be able to stand before the Pharaoh and interpret the Pharaoh's dream? He had to be, he had to be able to be truthful in the prophetic. And you see, this is the problem. Are the prophets truthful in the prophetic or do they rather just soften the words to soften the blow because they don't want to harm the people and this is what we must understand joseph was being tested by the father to see understand he's going to bring seven years of good but he's going to have to tell him that there's going to be seven years of famine so again there's going to be the bad and there's going to be the good and this is how Joseph was being tested. And this is what we must understand. We will be tested to see, will we be obedient to walk out the fullness of our call? Because the fullness of the call requires obedience. Obedience is what brings the blessing. Obedience is what's going to open the door to you being able to walk in the fullness of that which the Father has put before you. So, we must understand, those three branches that they saw, you know, the cupbearer and the, the, the baker, it was three branches, then it was three days, and the three days, Pharaoh will lift up his head and restore him to his place, and he was put 
um, and he'll put the Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former ruling when he was a cupbearer. So he gave him the explanation. But what was going to be the interpretation of the baker? The baker was he saw three white baskets were on his head and the baskets all kind of baked goods. So you see, the baked goods representing a lot is the baker. He's making bread. He's making all the things that he's made with the flour that will basically be the bread, the biscuits, whatever it is. And what does he see? He says, three days Pharaoh is going to lift off your head and hang you on a tree and the birds will eat the flesh from your body. So you see, who hung on a tree? Yeshua was the one who hung on a tree. And after three days, he had to die, but after three days, he was going to resurrect. So he had to go to the underworld and go and minister there, which says in Peter, this is what he did. He went and ministered, and then after three days, he resurrected. And we must understand that this was Joseph's test, because one had a good report, but one had an evil report. But Joseph was being honest to speak what was being revealed to him by the father and this was joseph's test to see was he going to be faithful in the test so the chief cupbearer comes out does not remember yosef but forgot him because yosef did not trust in abba and <laughs> said to him remember me when you come out but you see, what was that showing on Joseph's side? It was showing lack of trust. Lack of the trust that he was to be able to have in the fact that if the father is the one who has allowed him to be there, if the father is the one who is interpreting the dream, if the father is the one who is doing all of this, he's, he's the one interpreting the dreams, he's the one that the spirit of Yahuwah is upon him, then he's the one who's going to be able to let him come out at the appointed time. So do you see, may this be a lesson for us all, understanding if the father is the one who's brought you into the situation, the father is the one who's going to get you out of the situation. If the father is the one who has said, this is the way it's going to be, and if it's the will of the father, then you must understand, father's will is always going to be his way. And it's not your understanding and your plans. And he sometimes does something this way because he's trying to test you to see, will you be obedient? And you see, this is what we don't always understand. Father allows things to be able to come to test us, to be able to test, to see, will we do what he's called us to do? Will we go this way? And this is what we must understand. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And even when we think he's going to do it this way, he can change and he can do it another way. Because his ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And this is the way it is. But Father will have his way. And his way is the perfect way. And that's what we must understand. Surrender to him and understand his way is perfect. And so even though you might not understand what is going on in your life right now, and it might all look like it doesn't make sense to you, but you are to understand that he's still on his throne and he's holding you in the palm of, he, of his hand and he knows the end product. He knows what he's busy formulating. He knows what he's forming. He knows what he wants you to do. And the thing is, he's wanting your obedience to his word. You cannot deviate this way and deviate that way. And you cannot bring his purpose and his plan to pass in your strength. And you cannot make two and two add up to four in the way you want to do it in your understanding because Father's ways are not always our ways. His maths doesn't always add up. That much I understand. And so many times we try and help him with his plan, just like Joseph is now trying to help with the father's plan. And this is what we must understand. The father doesn't need our help. The father needs our obedience. He doesn't need your help. He wants your obedience. But you see, many times we... Um, we basically abort the plans of the Father because we say, oh, this must be the Father. This and this lines up and this and this because he spoke this and this. And then we run ahead of him. And then you know what we do? 
we just bump our head because at the end of the day, we are out of his will and we are making our own plans. And this is what we got a God for. So now we see that then all of a sudden the Pharaoh now has a dream and he sees seven lean cows coming out of the river, ugly and lean and stood um, and stood and the other cows on the bank of the river and ate up the seven beautiful cows. So he has a dream. He says seven, he sees seven fat cows coming out of the river and they were beautiful and looking and they were fed amongst the, re the, the, the reeds. And then all of a sudden there's seven ugly cows. And all of a sudden the seven ugly lean cows eat the seven fat cows. And then he has another dream of the seven heads of grain coming up from one stalk. So we will just now start to read because this is basically where we, we're going to pick up on the story again from chapter 12. Because we're going to read all of this now in chapter, uh, sorry, chapter 41 from verse 12. Let's start reading from verse 12. And this is when we see now where all of a sudden when the Pharaoh is going to have these two dreams, which we're going to read them again, um, he's saying, but wait a second. Now he goes and calls all his, um, you know, his, his advisors and the magicians and he calls them all, all the magicians to be able to the wise men of, the, of, of Mitzrayim to come and to relate his dream. Because he said these two dreams, he had it about the seven ears of grain and then the other lean uh, ears of grain and nobody could interpret it. And by the time um, we get to verse 12, it says, then all of a sudden the, um, the, 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 the cupbearer says, and there was with us a Hebrew youth, a servant of the captain of the God, and we related to him and he interpreted our dreams for us to each man. He interpreted according to his own dream. So you see, all of a sudden now, two years later, the cupbearer is remembering that, you see, because in verse 1 of chapter 41, it says, and it came to be at the end of the two-year time, the Pharaoh had a dream and saw him standing by the river. So you see, this is two years since Joseph has said to the cupbearer, remember me when you come out. Now two years go by where the cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He didn't even say a good word for him for what he did for him. And so many times people will forget you. And many times you've spoken words and everything, but nobody remembers. But at the appointed time, the father will make sure that they will remember the prophetic word that you have spoken. So don't worry. Don't worry if nobody um accepts the word or remembers the word what's important is did the word go forth your job is not to make sure that they that they accept it or hear it your job is to make sure that you speak it it needs to go forth because at the appointed time it will come to pass and so he now tells him that there was a hebrew youth a servant of the captain and we had dreams and he interpreted. Verse 13, and it came to be as he interpreted for us. So it came to be, he restored me to my office and he, and he, hung, and he hanged him. Then the Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his garments and came to the Pharaoh. So this was important that we looked last week. He changed his garments. You see, Father will give us new garments. He gives us new, new, a new walk, a new garments. He shaved him. So there's a cleansing taking place. The old has got to go. You're going to come into the new. So when father is bringing you into a new place, he puts a new mantle. He puts new garments. That's why now at this new year, what did we have to do? We had to go through a whole prophetic thing of Zechariah chapter 3, where we had to be able to get to the place of having to take off that garment of where we're being accused by Hasatan himself. And he was given a new garment. He was given a new turban on his head. He was given a new garment to be able to dress him. And so it says in verse 14, And the Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his garments 
and came to the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh said to, to Yosef, I have dreamt a dream, and there is no one to interpret it. Now I myself have heard it, and said of you that you understand a dream to interpret it. Now listen to Yosef giving glory to the Father. And Yosef answered, the, answered Pharaoh, saying, it is, it is not in me. Let Alua answer Pharaoh with peace. So he understood his gifting was not his gifting. His gifting is the Father's gifting, and everything that he does is to bring glory to the Father. And you see, young uh, Yosef now has matured. He's matured from the young Yusuf that was a little bit arrogant with the dreams and the visions that I had this dream and this vision and this is what's going to happen. You see, he now understands it is the father the one who interprets the dreams. It is the father the one who is going to be able to reveal this to you. And Pharaoh said to Yusuf, see, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river and saw seven cows coming out up out of the river, beautiful looking and fat, and they fed amongst the reeds. Then saw seven other cows coming up after them, poor and very ugly, and lean of flesh, such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Mitzrayim. And the lean of the flesh and the ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. Yet when they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were as ugly as as at the beginning, then I awoke. Also, I looked in my dream and I saw seven heads coming up on one stalk, complete and good. Then saw seven heads withered, lean, scorched by the east wind, coming up after them. And the lean head swallowed the seven good heads. And I spoke to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. And Yosef said to the Pharaoh, the dream of the Pharaoh is one. Alua has shown Pharaoh what is about to do. What he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and seven good heads are seven years. It is one dream. And the seven lean, ugly cows which come up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads scorched by the east wind are seven years of scarcity of food. This is the word which I spoke to the Pharaoh. Alua has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. So you see, Father, in this hour, is going to start speaking, sometimes not even to the prophets. He might speak to teachers. He might speak to kings. He might speak to normal people. But the Father, because you see, we are all called to be able to have visions and dreams. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So at the end of the day, if the Ruach of Yahuwah is upon us, we will be dreaming dreams and we will be seeing visions. And so do not for one minute think that everybody that just sees visions and dreams is necessarily a prophet. Because we all call to prophesy and we all call to see visions and dreams. So just because people see visions and dreams doesn't automatically make them a prophet. And this is what we must understand. And this is a king. This is a pharaoh. He's the man in charge of the land. But how profound that the father is able to give a dream to a heathen king. And so please understand something. Don't for one minute think that the father cannot warn a heathen person of the destruction that is going to come. Isn't it amazing that even when September 11th happened, Father was so faithful that so many people were delayed. There were so many things that happened that day that the people should have been at work, that were not at work, that was, should have been in those towers, that there was traffic jams, then there was delays with the, with the, 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 you know, the, them catching the train. And there were many things orchestrated that brought about the fact that people were not in that building. So where a lot of more people should have died, they did not, because the Father in his faithfulness is always giving time, always giving time for people to be able to get to a place of seeing his hand in something and then being able to repent. Now there in America, people had a great opportunity to see the hand of the Father of so many people that should have been in that building that were not, there was a warning for them. The same as what we have seen in this whole pandemic. Father gave us time 
to be able to repent and turn from our addictions and the ways that was, you know, so many things in our lives to give us a an opportunity and a time to repent and turn back to him. So I need you to understand, Father doesn't just automatically bring judgment. Father, before he brings judgment, he's been warning and warning and warning and warning because he is a Yah of love. And he desires, not just, he desires mercy. So even that's why, even when we pray and we say, in your judgments, Father, remember mercy. And so we must understand he's a merciful yeah. And so that's why he's going to give them seven years of plentiful first. So guess what? We've been hearing already for two years, more than two years. We've been hearing famine is coming, famine is coming, famine is coming. Already father started to speak to me. Already since 2020, he started to say to me, gather food, famine is coming. Gather food, famine is coming. Two years into it, and what are people doing? Do you see what is going on? Do you see how more and more farms are being burnt? Do you see how more and more of our food supply, our food chain is being destroyed? Do you see what's going on? Do you see the wicked and evil agenda that is there to be able to bring on a famine? Now we must understand if the Bible talks about the fact that there's going to be a black horse and the, a loaf of bread is going to cost you a denarius and you're starting to see what is going on around you. He's given ample time. He's not going to spring it upon you. He's been speaking through the mouth of many prophets and I'm talking many prophets and many people have been saying famine is on our doorstep. We need to start. I mean, even even the United Nations, even they have been speaking words to say that the, the times ahead is going to be famine of a, of a biblical proportion that is coming. And why would they say something like that? Because they're the ones orchestrating it. And this is what we must understand. So Yah is giving them, he's telling them, seven good, good years is going to be for you to be able to understand. That is the time for you to be able to start gathering. And so... This is what the father is showing the Pharaoh. Seven good years, seven lean years. So, see, seven years of great plenty are coming in all the land of Mitzrayim. But after them, seven years of scarcity of food shall arise and all the plenty be, be forgotten in the land of Mitzrayim. And the scarcity of food shall destroy the land. So you must understand, the minute famine comes, the land is destroyed. Because why? Why? People will turn against each other for food. You must understand, there's nothing worse that comes. When there is war, there is famine. Because war and famine come together. So when there's famine, it will bring about war. Why? Because people will turn against each other to be able to steal for food. You must understand that great, great destruction is on our doorstep. This is what is coming. And so... He says, but after the seven years of scarcity of food shall arise and all the plenty be, be forgotten in the land of Mitzrayim and the scarcity of food shall destroy the land and the plenty shall not be remembered in the land because the scarcity of food following for it is very severe. So you must understand there is a severity coming because why? They're burning down our farms. If it's not the burning of the farms, it's the floods. I mean, just today, again, above our land over here, above the heavens, all I kept seeing was chemtrails. Chemtrails, all these things, constantly, 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 to once again bring the destruction in the atmosphere, to bring about their plans, to bring about their poisoning, to bring about this change of weather patterns. They're bringing these things on, people. And this is what we must understand. We cannot stand back and be oblivious to these things and say, oh, well, you know what, that's just a plane in the sky. No, 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 no. That's not just a plane in the sky. This is part of their plan to bring about the destruction of what they're busy doing. Verse 32, and the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the word is established by a law and a law is hasting, hasting to do it. So you must understand, the 
Father is allowing. Now you must understand, in Revelation chapter 12 it says, and then the uh, Satan is cast out onto the earth with his demons. And when he's cast out onto the earth, he's got a, a time in which the Father allows him to have his way. He's got a time. And so we must understand that we can't stand back and be oblivious and say, oh, well, you know, nothing's going to happen. Well, the Father is going to not allow this. You must understand that the Father is going to allow it because it is already written in the Word. Everything that is written in the Word, He is going to allow it to be. And so if we look at Revelation chapter 12, let me just go there because this is now in my spirit. And it says, in Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 it says, And there came to be fighting in the heavens. Michal and his messengers fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his messengers fought. And they were not strong enough, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. And the great dragon was thrown out, the serpent of old, called the devil Hasatan, who led all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his messengers were thrown out with him. And I heard a loud voice in the heavens, Now have come the deliverance and the power and the reign and the allure and the authority of the Messiah for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before a lure day and night has been thrown down. So you see, he's going to be thrown down, which means that now he's not going to be able to accuse us anymore before the Father in heaven, but he's going to be thrown down into the earth. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their witness, and they did not love their lives to the death. And so for how long is this going to happen? Because it says, because of this rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has little time. So you see, he comes down and he's got little time, but the father allows him to have his time. What is that time? And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for a times, times and a half a time, three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. And out of his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river after the woman to cause her to be swept away by the river. Interesting water again always the water the water that comes to be able to bring the destruction the water the serpent coming out of the sea out of the water so you see this is why i'm saying we must understand the father will allow these things and that is why he had to raise up joseph because father knew what was coming Father knew what was coming and he knew that his people that were in, in the land of Canaan, in the land of Israel at the time was Canaan, when they were there, they were going to need to be protected. So he already sent Joseph ahead. So praise the Father. The Father is going to raise up his Josephs that go ahead, that need to prepare everything for the time that is going to be ahead of us. And so we look and we see, we, we carry on reading. Verse 33, and now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Mitzrayim. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint overseers over the land to take up one fifth of the land of Mitzrayim in the seven years of plenty. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the hand of the Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And the Pharaoh shall be for a store and the food shall be for a store for the land for the seven years of scarcity of food which shall be in the land of Mitzrayim and do not let the land be cut off by the scarcity of food. Now listen to the wisdom that is within this young man. Listen to the wisdom. And why is there such wisdom? Because you see he's been equipped. He's already had to run Potiphar's house in knowing how to feed a multitude in Potiphar's house. He was the man in charge of feeding all the people in Potiphar's house. Then he was put in order to be able to be feeding all the people that was in the jail, in the prison that he was put in. He was the man in charge of making sure that he was the one that was going to feed them. So now he has wisdom, you understand. He's telling the Pharaoh, you need to raise up a man that is going to be able to do this. I'm telling you what to do. He didn't say, oh, you know what? I am the man of the hour. I am the one who's going to do this for you. 
I am the anointed and the appointed of the Father. And come in his pride and his arrogance. That's not what he does. He tells him, he says to him, that it's Alua that is the one who has given the interpretation of the dream. He's the one that says that Alua is the one who is hastening, he's the one who is showing you this, hastening to be able to do it. And now he's given him the wisdom because this is the wisdom that he has acquired. So understand. Now we all want to be able to walk in the call, but nobody wants to be equipped to the call. You cannot walk in your call unless you are equipped to be able to walk in the call. And that is why the Father has been equipping you. But you see, everybody just wants to raise themselves up. I've got the prophetic word. Now I need to be able to put it into practice. No, 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 no. You have to first be tested and you have to first be tried and you have to be equipped just like Joseph was equipped. And some of those tests and some of those trials, trials was not easy for Joseph. So verse 37 says, And the word was good in the eyes of the Pharaoh and in the eyes of all the servants. And the Pharaoh said to his servants, Could we find another like him? Now listen to what the Pharaoh says. A man in whom the spirit of Elohim is. So you see, who is the man or the woman that the father's going to raise up? One whom the spirit of Elohim is within. And that one is humble. That one has been equipped. That one has been broken down to a pulp so that there's none of his flesh that is still there. He has gone through the process. She has gone through the process. She has been broken down, or he has been broken down, and the father has been equipping, and the father has taken them on a journey, and the father has been equipping them all this time, all the hardships, all the trials, all the things that have happened. I mean, just today I sat with a prophet, and we were and she's sharing with me the difficulties that she's been going through and all the things that she's been going through and all I could turn around and say the father is equipping you the father has allowed all these things to happen why? because the father is the one who is allowing all of this because of the greater work that needs to be done and you see this is the thing many times we do not understand that we are going to be put in a pit it's a prophet in training put in that pit Joseph was put in that pit and that pit was the prophet that was going to be in training. Yeah, Joseph is not the one standing and saying, I am the one that knows how to do this. You know, I worked for Potiphar and in Potiphar's house, I did this and this and this. And I worked in the jail and in the jail, I did this and this and this. And he needs to give his resume and needs to be able to tell everybody how wonderful and how he has arrived. And he's the anointed and the appointed of the father and give all his credentials. You don't need to give your credentials to anybody because at the end of the day, the father is the one who anoints, the father is the one who equips, the father is the one who appoints, and the father is the one who will release you at the appointed time. You don't need to give your credentials to anybody because at the end of the day, the father is the one who raises you up. And so that's when this is Joseph being himself. Now he's learned. He's been humbled for how many years? He was a young man when he started on this journey. And now how many years later, he's wised up and you can see the wisdom upon this man. And this is why. Now, this is when you raise up, when you're ready to walk in your call, they will see, the people will see, just like it was with Samuel. Not one of his words fell to the ground and they were the ones that were saying, this is an anointed and appointed man of Yahuwah. He's a prophet. And this is when Samuel was able to be raised up to become prophet, priest, and judge. He was all three. He was a prophet, he was a priest, and he was a judge. The only one that walked in all three. Deborah was a prophet and she was a judge. But Samuel was a priest, a prophet, and a judge. And so you see, but even Samuel himself had to be equipped. Samuel had to go through a process. And this is why I'm saying, we have to go through the process. Then the Pharaoh said to Yosef, Since Alua has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. So imagine that. In all of the land, there was no one that was going to be as wise and discerning as what he was. And why? Why was everybody going to be as wise and discerning as what he was? Because at the end of the day, why? Because the father was the one that was going to lead him 
the father was the one that was going to be able to be the one that was giving him the wisdom that he needed. The wisdom that he had did not come from him. And this is what you must understand. When you are ready to walk into your call, when you are ready to walk into that place, everything that is necessary, you have been humbled. And then you are at the end of yourself. And when you are at the end of this yourself, it's when self is no longer on the throne. Self is not still trying to make it work. Self has surrendered. Self has laid itself down. And self is no longer on the throne. And now it allows the father to be the one to lead, to guide, to be the one to do everything. That is when you get to the place of being ready to allow the father to be the one to work through you, to walk into the fullness of that call. So how long is it going to take? As long as you are going to allow yourself to be crucified. Because as long as self is still on the throne, then the Father cannot allow you to be able to go out there because you'll do more damage than what you'll do good. And that's why many people have gone ahead. And that's why many are falling. So, he says in verse 40, Be over my house, you yourself, and at your mouth all my people shall kiss only the throne. I am greater than you. So do you see? Now he puts him in charge of everything. In charge of everything. He's going to put him in charge of everything. And this is why we must understand that the Father is the one who is going to do the work. The Father is the one that is going to be able to do the work that needs to be done. He raises you up at his appointed time. And then he will show the rest of the people around you to know that you are the one chosen by the Father. And the Pharaoh said to Joseph, to Yosef, See, I have set you over the land of Mitzrayim. And the Pharaoh took his seal ring. So you see, he gives you the ring. What is the ring symbolic of? his hand and put it on Yosef's hand and he dressed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Isn't it interesting? He gives him the ring. The ring is the ring of authority, the ring of the covenant that now he has got a covenant with Joseph. Joseph is the one in charge, second in charge of the whole land. He gives him a robe, interesting, a robe of fine linen, garments of fine linen. Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. He's now been seen by the Father as righteous. He's given the ring of authority. The Father gives him the authority that he needs. The Father gives him the fine linen and the Father puts a gold chain around his neck to say, I will prosper you now. So you must understand, when we allow ourselves to go through our process. And when we allow ourselves to be the broken vessels before the Father, the Father at his appointed time, authority is given by the Father. You don't go around doing your thing. Father gives the authority that you've got to walk in. He equips you. He takes you through the process. He leads you. He guides you. He breaks you down. He tests you. He puts you through the fire. He puts you through the furnace. So you can have this big prophetic word. You can have this powerful prophetic word. But the process to get you there, this is the problem. And many people do not allow him to take them through the process to get there. Because when Father starts to touch on this area, and Father starts to touch on that area, then you don't want to surrender. And you don't want to give it up. And what you don't understand, he doesn't move you past your last disobedience. And this is the problem. And so he's going to put the fine linen on him. You see, Joseph is now ready. He's receiving the fine linen because he's now ready to be able to become the righteousness of Abba Yahuwah. He's stood the test. He has stood in the face of a Jezebel that came up against him. A Jezebel that wanted to lead him into seduction, into being able to be seduced. And he withstood Jezebel. Every prophet will have to withstand Jezebel. Jezebel came up against him day after day. Jezebel tried to destroy him. Jezebel accused him. Jezebel had him thrown into jail. Jezebel spoke up against him. Jezebel destroyed his reputation. But at the appointed time, Father raises him up 
that even though Jezebel tries to destroy his reputation and destroy the father's name and destroy the father's name amongst the people that were starting to see the glory of the father, it goes and destroys because that's what a serpent seed does. It brings division. It brings destruction. That's what the serpent seed does. Especially when Jezebel raises itself up because it wants to lead the people away and astray. But, praise the Father, he had to withstand it. But now, imagine they were all making a mockery. They were all laughing at Joseph, speaking up behind Joseph's back. Ha, 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 where's his Yahuwah now? Where's his great Yahuwah that he served now? Look at what he did. Look at what he did. He went and, no, 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 you see, he gets the righteous garments because he stood in the face of opposition. He stood in the grounds and was obedient to the father even to the point of having to be thrown in prison for a crime he did not commit all because he was having to be faithful to the father and to the word of the father and was being faithful to what father was telling him to do that he knew in his spirit what was right and what was wrong and he didn't give in to the lust of his flesh it was so easy give in to the lust of the flesh Nobody's going to know anyway. She's mad over you anyway. She's not going to go tell her husband. But you see, Joseph wasn't going to fall for that one. And so he had to withstand Jezebel. And then gets put in prison. And the tests and the trials continue. But look and see what the father does now. And he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee! He set him over all the land of Mitzrayim. In one moment, both of his dreams, now he's starting to see a little bit of what is going to come to pass. But now, wait a second, there were the sheaves, there were the, the, the stars. So now he's starting to see he's going to raise up as being important. So these dreams, now it's starting to become a reality. Now he's starting to see his dreams. He's starting to see the prophetic word that the father has given him starting to become a reality. In all of a sudden, wow, could it be? This is what my dreams meant. I was going to have people bowing before me. That's why all these sheaves were bowing before me. And the Pharaoh said to Yosef, I am Pharaoh and without a word from you, let no man lift his hand or foot in all the land of Mitzrayim. You see, Father will raise you up at the appointed time. Why must you try to raise yourself up? Why must you be the one to want to make man see who you are or do your own thing and try and bring Father's plan to fulfillment out of yourself? Allow yourself to be surrendered under the mighty hand of the Father and he will do what he needs to do. The vision that the Father gave me of a place of refuge has tarried for 20 years, 20 years. And now, only now, the vision is surely going to come to pass. It is not yet in its fullness, but it's going to come to pass. Because that which the Father showed me 20 years ago, I've had to tarry. I've had to wait on him. I've had to not even understand. I, I had to lay it down and eventually come to the place of saying, well, you know, maybe that wasn't of the Father. Because it was so far from it being a reality. But at the appointed time, it shall come to pass. And the Pharaoh called Yosef's name, Zaphanath Pania. And what does that mean? Zaphanath Pania. So Zaphanath Pania, his name, Yosef, means Yahuwah has added. So Yahuwah is going to add many things to Yosef, you see. Yosef has gone through many things, but now he changes his name to Zafnath, Zafnath Pania. And that means treasury of the glorious rest. See, now Joseph is going to come to rest. He's going to have the treasury of the glorious rest because he's paid the price. You see, when one has paid the price, then Father is going to restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. So don't worry about where you see yourself right now. Don't worry about the test that you're going through right now because at the appointed time, it shall surely be restored. Whatever it is that the enemy has stolen, whatever it is that the enemy has done, 
Your job is to make sure that you stay willing and obedient. Surrendered to the Father, be willing, be obedient, and it shall surely come to pass at the appointed time. And he gave him as a wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. Interesting. Joseph doesn't just get any woman. He gets a woman that is a daughter of a priest. So at the end of the day, this woman is a woman that also has some um, traits of being set apart because she comes from a family of being a priestly line. And Yosef went out over all the land of Mitzrayim. Now Yosef was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim. And Yosef went out from the presence of the Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Mitzrayim. Now interesting, this 30, this number 30 keeps coming up. So what does this number 30 carry? The number 30 carries the symbolic association of various numbers, which is three, which is divine perfection, multiplied by 10, which is fulfillment, and 5, which is grace, multiplied by 6, which is the spirit of man. This implies the perfection or the fulfillment of natural man who is saved by the grace of Yahuwah. So you see, at the age of 30 now, he's ready to come into the fullness of that which the Father has spoken, but he's had many years of equipping, just like someone else that we know. This is the age when the Levites complete their five years of training and are released for the service in the temple. So the Levites also go and get sent out at the age of 30. It is also the age that Yahushua started his ministry on earth. He was 30 years of age. So imagine all that time up until the age of 30, he was being equipped he was being equipped. His whole life was a process of equipping him. He didn't just walk into it. He was being equipped. He could have already been doing all the miracles of when he was a little young boy, isn't it? He could have been doing all these miracles. But only at the age of 30 does he raise up. What about King David? David was 30 when he started to reign. Yet he was called as a young boy, anointed as a young shepherd boy. He was called Yet, only at the age of 30, he started to reign. It implies that a person's character is fashioned to the point of maturity so that he can act with wisdom and discernment. So you see, what is the most important thing? There was something that I learned many years ago, many, many years ago, right in the beginning. I mean, yeah, you've got these big prophetic words and this big prophetic call. And then what I always remember was that, you see, the call can be up there, but the character is still very low and the character needs to raise up to the level of the call and so your character must first be equipped and that's why the many breaking down and the many testing and the many trialing so that the character can start to line up because you see the character needs to be shaped because the call can be very high but if the character is not shaped, then the slightest little gust of wind comes along. When the people start to stand up against you and the people start to speak up against you, then what happens? Then you go into the rejection mode and you go into this woe is me. And that is why the Father has to take you through the whole process of your character being able to be matured. It is also the number of the Hebrew word ki, that means burning or means flaming or on fire. You see, because this is what Yosef is going to raise up. He's going to be a flame of fire for the Father. He's going to be a light. He's going to be a light in this nation and to the nations of the world and to us still today, a flame of fire for us. From a negative point of view, okay, let's just see. From a negative point of view, the number also carries with its association of betrayal can be seen with the 30 pieces of silver and Judas received for betraying Yoshua. And we understand that Yosef was, was sold. And it was also just like Yoshua was sold for 30 pieces of silver. So did Yosef. So we see a lot of similarities between Yosef and Yoshua. It shows that your character is formed to a point where you are ready to be, for, where you are ready to be filled with the Ruach or to take up your calling. So you see, this is when he's now ready 
to take up his calling. Verse 47. And in the seven years of plenty, the ground brought forth generously. So you see, the father will make sure that even that little bit that you have, he will multiply it even more so that you can start to reap, reap of its harvest because he knows of the famine that is coming at the, the day ahead. And so the father, for those that are being uh, faithful, he will even multiply that little bit that we will have, he will multiply for us. And he gathered all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Mitzrayim and laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Thus Yosef gathered very much grain on the sand of the sea until, as the sand of the sea until he ceased counting for it was without number. Now imagine how much did he gather and could they not be thankful for the last life of Yosef? Because who else was going to have that kind of wisdom? So do you understand? Please, please, today the warning is for you. Do not run ahead of the Father. Because if you are being equipped, and the Father needs to equip you, if Yosef was not equipped in the things that the Father was putting, he needed to be equipped even in going into the jail. He was being equipped so that he would be able to walk in the fullness of his call. So you see, if you're not in the place of allowing Father to bring the full equipping, then you are going to be able to abort the project halfway through, because you will not be ready to walk in the fullness of your call. That is why he allows you to go through the process until he is ready to release you at his appointed time, not yours. And Yosef, and to Yosef was born two sons before the years of scarcity of food came, whom Asnath, the daughter of the Potiphera priest of On, bore to him. And Yosef called the name of the firstborn Manashish, for Alua has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. So you see, even the fact that he says, I'm longing for my father. I'm longing for my father's house. I'm longing even for these brothers that, that, that sold me out into slavery. I still long for my father's house and all the hardship that I've gone through. But now, look at what the father has done, even allowed him to forget all his hardships. And the name of the second he called Ephraim. For Alua has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So you see, even in the land of your affliction, there is a place of fruitfulness. Even when you are being afflicted by the Father, by going through many hardships and many trials, He is able to still bless you and allow you to be multiplied and be fruitful. Because that is why Yosef, even when he was in Potiphar's house, even when he was in the jail, the spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahuwah, the spirit of Yahuwah was still upon him. And the Pharaoh sees that he is a man filled with the spirit of Yahuwah. And the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Mitzrayim came to an end. And the seven years of scarcity of food began to come, as Yosef had said. And the scarcity of food was in the lands but in all the lands of Mitzrayim, there was no bread. So you see, the word is going, there's going to be a scarcity of food, not only of the bread. What is the bread? The bread is the life, which is the word. The word is the bread. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. There's coming a time that it's not just going to be the scarcity of food, but there's going to be the scarcity of the truth of Yahuwah's word. There's a lot of word going forth, but how much of that word is the truth of Yahuwah? But when all the land of Mitzrayim hungered and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, Pharaoh said to all the Mitzrites, go to Yosef, do whatever he says to you. And the scarcity of food was, all, was over all the face of the earth. So understand, now Joseph becomes, Yosef becomes second in charge, 
not only for Mitzrayim, but all over the world. So all over the earth, there was now scarcity of food. So Yosef doesn't only become second in charge of Mitzrayim, but now he's going to have to feed the nations of the world. So you see, the plan that the Father has for you might not just be for this little thing that you're doing now. It might be for a bigger plan that has to do with the nations of the world. And Yosef opened all the... And Yosef opened all the storehouses and sold to the Mitzrites, and the scarcity of the food was severe in the land of Mitzrayim. And all the earth came to Yosef in Mitzrayim to buy grain, because the scarcity of food was severe in all the earth. So understand, if the father didn't raise up Yosef, the whole world was going to go into destruction, because one man rose up. So, once again, he takes the place of Messiah Yoshua, who becomes the living bread that is going to die and resurrect and bring life to all the nations of the world for those who are going to accept him. So, once again, Yoshua is Yosef. He's Ben Yosef, not just Ben David. He is Ben Yosef. He came as the suffering servant to die so that he could become the bread of life that is going to give life to all those of the nations of the world that will choose to come to him, that will choose to follow him, that will choose to obey him, that will choose to walk as he walked. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, Father. Wow, my Father, what an awesome Revelation it is about the life and testimony of Yosef. Oh, Father, it is so comforting to be able to see how precious you are in being able to see your patterns unfold, your ways unfold in how you are so faithful to your people that you will not allow them to be able to go into destruction without giving them a way out, without bringing a plan, because you will put the things in place that need to be put in place. But are your people, are they open to hear your voice? voice? Are they open to be able to surrender their lives and allow you to be able to have your way in them so that they may be able to make a difference, not just for them and for their family, but for a greater family? Because at the end of the day, it's all about your people. And this is why you died and this is why you resurrected so that you would be able to come and reconcile us back to our Father, so that we, in turn, could make a difference on the earth. But what are we busy looking to? Are we looking to this little, narrowed little vision of what we see going on around us? And yet, at the end of the day, we do not lift up our eyes knowing where does our help come from. Our help comes from Yahuwah, the creator of heaven and earth. And that the sun is not going to smite us by day, nor the moon by night, because our trust and our faith is in you and you alone. And if we just follow after you, it doesn't matter whether we're going to be slain, if we're going to have to die for our faith, just as we read in 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 in. in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12 that we are going to be able to stand and not love our lives unto death knowing that no matter what the most important thing is are we going to be faithful and truthful to you in the time of opposition in the time of the critical hour of when destruction is going to be on our doorstep what will we do will we trust you and Abba Yahuwah, for those of us that have visions and dreams and prophetic words, help us, my Father, to be faithful to you, to allow ourselves to be submitted and surrendered and allow you to have your process and allow us to be humble, to bow our knee and allow you to take us through the process that we need to go through before we even think of raising ourselves up. Because you will raise 
your servants up at the appointed time. And servants need to be servants that are in submission to the master because they only follow one master and the master is the one that will have his way in them. And so Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you for this word. I thank you for the awesome testimony of the understanding that we have famine on our doorstep right now. But I thank you, Father, that you have many Josephs that are in preparation right now. And I pray, give them the strength to endure and to be able to be submitted to you to allow you to be the one to lead and guide so that they do not abort your plans by doing things of their own flesh. And so I praise and I thank you for this word. And I thank you, Father, for your leading, your leading and your guidance in everything that we do by your Ruach HaKodesh. In Yoshua's name I pray this. Amen.